Okay, nobody could believe it and nobody wanted to believe it, but it has happened. Messi has left Barcelona. He's not a Catalan anymore and he is in PSG, he's in Paris. So I have 11 burning questions for you, Lal, our fake pundit, and we're going to start with Messi. Now, with Messi, Neymar and Mbappe, is PSG the outright favorite to win the Champions League? If not, who do you think it is? PSG is one of the favorites. I would give them let's say 40% chance to as the winner of the uh Champions League. If not them, then it would be either Barcelona, I mean sorry, not Barcelona. They are screwed now. They are screwed. Bayern Munich or City. I think these would be my top 3 picks. uh psg bayern munich and city you know what people will do see, people will edit see. this and they ask i'm asking you and you saying barcelona this is exactly what's going to be there and then people are like look at these Actually, people they don't know anything but by the way uh, messi watches this uh, so i just wanted to rub it in oh yeah he's like you left now barcelona is favorite they were like ah. he said something in spanish nobody understood anything all right moving on to the second question with romelu lukaku finally back in premier league I mean, if you talk about merry merry go round of all the uh, uh, what's happening in uh, German football, where it's like all the coaches are like running around to different uh, the teams. Well, Romelu Lukaku is one person who's gone to like literally so many teams within Premier League. Now he's back, and this deal is around ninety-seven point five million pounds. And Kane's deal is still very doubtful. Do you think Chelsea are now favourites to win the Premier League? Um, yes and no. I think. with with kane coming to city absolutely no hands down city favorites uh with uh, without kane i would still say slightly i still lean slightly towards city but chelsea are there chelsea are the team are genuine challengers all right if you got to give the percentage to only chelsea and city what would you say Right now, without the Kane transfer, I would In, say entire hundred percent between these two. What will you do? Yeah, 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 fifty-five, forty-five, fifty-five to City. And after Kane, if Kane comes through, <laughs> then it's you just give that trophy. Just, just sixty-five, take it. thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. Sixty-five. Then All right, fair. Will be the second. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So, which Premier League manager is favorite to be sacked now? My first name I've given is Arteta, and also to telling to the, all the viewers that I wrote Arteta even before watching yesterday's game, which they <laughs> lost to fucking Brentford, who just been promoted to fucking nil. And Arteta, our own very own Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Nuno Espirito Santo, Steve Bruce, Patrick Vieira, Rafael Benitez, David Moyes, who did very well, or surprise, surprise, Jurgen Klopp. I did not write. Cardiola's name. I was wanted to, but I just couldn't do it. So, who do you think? Hmm. I mean, can you give me like so, at least like I will like three or four to, of favorites? I will have to go into my Paul the Octopus avatar back. Um, We will see. revisit this, by the way, in few months. Yes, I think uh, Arteta. I mean, after yesterday's result, of course, I think going into the international break, like he'll be the manager most under pressure. Probably he'll. He'll go in the break with zero points because the next match is Chelsea and then City. So Arsenal is screwed. First three matches, chances are they'll have zero points, and they'll be at the bottom of the table in the international break. So of course he is going to be most under pressure. But I think uh, the crowd will turn only after ten matches. I mean, first match it's too difficult to say. But coming back to all the list, all the names that you gave, I would like to add one name to that list is Ralph Hasenhutl, Southampton. They've I deliberately sold, did not write it. I yeah, deliberately I, did not write because they sold a lot I of mean, players, right? Yeah, they sold a lot of players, and last two seasons they've had like two nine nil results. It's just freak, right? It's freaky, and if things don't go their way, they had they may concede another like a big, 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 big number of goals, and I would not be surprised he's thrown in the mix. Uh, so I would say Ralph Hasnutl, uh, Arteta. And if I had to pick a third one, it would be. Uh, Ole, Ole at the wheel. Ole, Ole. No, I don't think he's just signed a three-year contract. I don't think they're going to fire. He'll be the first one to get fired for sure. Uh, but I would think it will be Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce. Uh, crowd is not with him. The problem with Newcastle is no one is. I don't know for what reason they're not backing Steve Bruce. And with crowds back in the stadium. If things go don't go his way, he's going to get booed left, right, and center. So I would put my odds on Steve Bruce, 
Mikel Arteta and Ralph Hasenhüttl. Ranking? Uh, let's say in the same order. All right. So Ralph is number one. No, uh, Steve Bruce. Oh, Steve uh, is number one. Arteta is number two, and Ralph is number three. Okay, fair enough. So I think apart yeah. from Arteta, who can be actually be sacked if uh, Arsenal is not even in top ten, but the other two, I think it pretty much relies completely on if they are actually struggling to even like you know stay afloat, which is like number seventeen. That's only when they'll get sacked because I feel like Ralph and uh, even Steve uh, with their owner, who is nobody likes. Um, Newcastle so yeah. he still have Mike Ashley and I think he's not going to get sacked but Arteta can still get sacked even if they're not in the rele- relegation battle okay i think also you've kind of answered one of the question i was going to ask you later but i'll still ask you that later anyway maybe you might want to change your mind otherwise you will be called somebody's haters i don't want to say his name right now which will come all right so which trio is more lethal unless you come up with another trio is neymar messi suarez or neymar messi mbappe which hasn't even kicked a single ball yet or ronaldo Benzema Bale Cristiano Ronaldo I mean not For, Brazilian Ronaldo I mean the the answer was there in your question itself because uh, <laughs> Messi Neymar and Mbappe have not kicked the ball so I can't comment on that and I Well ESPN pundits have been already saying they are the best ever without even kicking a no. ball that's why they're pundits For me for me that the 3 three, 2 3 years that uh, Suarez Messi and Neymar were together best ever that I have seen better than Ronaldo Benzema and Bale because they won won everything also so i would say those th- that front three is the best ever that i've seen yeah i think i'm going to change this name of this podcast to trolling messi non stop <laughs> non stop yes we love you messi right. you know it you know it you know it we buy your underwears also which you have not washed all right so who will be the top scorer now in the premier league and why do you think it's going to be romelu lukaku ooh he will be there or thereabouts for sure uh, you're right i think lukaku has to be there i think uh, mo salah will be back this season uh, back with a bang uh, so my money would be and and with kane missing out on like the first couple of games in the season i would still not count him out uh, but if i had to give one name it has to be i would pick kane and salah over lukaku kane and salah Yeah. Wait, give me one name. You're saying Salah is going to be back with the bang when he was not even with the bang. Yes, last year he almost won it, right? So if you only say he's back with the bang, he should win it. Like he should be the guy. Yes, that's why I think. Ah, uh, I would still think if Kane transfer happens to City, he's going to score a bag load of goals, and I think I, my money is on Kane. Still, okay, fair followed enough. Followed by Salah, followed by Salah, followed by Lukaku. And this is gonna backfire so badly, man. So badly. I can, I can sense it. I can sense it. I'm gonna rub it all over you in few months. I am months. telling you, Lukaku is is gonna not is not gonna have a great season. He's gonna he's like a small team bully. He'll score like good goals against like those ten teams. But now there are ten good teams in the Premier League, and he'll flop against those teams. Well, Lukaku is all in the United. Premier League. He might hurt. Yeah, Lukaku is always scored in Premier League. Lukaku is always scored wherever the hell he's gone. But you know, we just not against you know, the top six. Look at his record against the big teams. Well, he scored three or four against Southampton. You just said Southampton loves to be getting pushed to nine nil. They'll this nine nil will be Lukaku seven goals. Yeah. So there you go. And nobody cares, man. It's a goal is a goal at why, the end of the day. And that's why he's in the top three. Otherwise, he all right. So question number six is: Which three teams you think are the most likely to be relegated this season? and that's what i was saying one and one one big top 10 team which will also find themselves amongst the bottom 3 if they don't start well in the first 5 10 games okay so i think let me give you my bottom 5 and then we can narrow down on bottom 3 i think it will be one of the newly promoted teams uh, my bet is norwich brentford will be fine they'll have they'll be like a sheffield united and leeds they'll be they'll have a great first season Watford I think will will also do relatively well so my money like bottom team will be you know bottom in the bottom 3 it will be Norwich uh it will be Brighton and I think I want to say Burnley but somehow that guy Sean Dyche just you know uh it, it does a good job every year but I think Burnley uh Newcastle will be in the bottom 5 like and Southampton So Burnley, Newcastle, Southampton, Norwich, and uh, Brighton. These would be my five teams fighting out 
for you know relig in the relegation scrap. No, Norwich is easy one because they always come up, they go down, they come up, they go down. This is how they work. They have this amazing model yeah. and they're pretty comfortable with that, so that's fair enough. Yeah. All right, so but you didn't pick one top ten team that will also be fighting with it. Okay, which one was it? You said was one of them was it because Southampton did not finish in top ten. You said no. Norwich, Southampton, no, I, Newcastle, Newcastle, but you didn't pick any top ten. Mm. That's why I was saying you were kind of already see, answered before. I don't see top ten teams going down. Like I mean, they will. They, Arsenal might be there in the beginning of the season, but I don't. That's think what I'm saying, right? I'm, the, I don't think they'll go down, but I just feel like they might they, be like you know there be, and thereabouts. They they will be like. But don't you think Arsenal yeah, can be because Arsenal going to score with a lot of nil nil zero zero points, and they might no, be like. I don't, I, 15 16 I mean there are okay let me let me put it this way there are worse teams than Arsenal like in the in the Premier League there are at least five worse teams than Arsenal in the in the league so I don't think Arsenal will be going down but they will be in the bottom of the table for a large part of the season Fair enough by the way today was a very good match between Manchester United and Leeds uh, United scored okay. first Bruno Fernandes it was not even a penalty after that Leeds um, equalized right That's when the start of the second half and then United went mental and Paul Pogba had like four assists or some shit like that Bruno Fernandes had three goals Greenwood had a goal and somebody else also scored who was who was there last Fred, the end. Fred. Fred also freaking Fred people, also scored Fred. Man, this is ominous. I like this start. I got to say that, you know, once there was one all, you know, normally you would think like, oh, this is going to be another 1-1. One, one. Oh my God, another win we should have gotten. But then they went completely berserk. And it's just nice to see Bruno Fernandes back because what has happened, Bruno was amazing. But the fact that three he really had goals. a... Three field goals. Yeah, three field goals. goals. And the people who was like, Bruno Penalty Fernandes, his name is, right? So people like, you know... But right now, because we also wanted Bruno to start well because Bruno had a terrible, terrible time at the Euros. And um, this is wonderful. I think when he wears the United shirt, he becomes a different person. And I like I that. I love the, loved the way they announced Varan. They introduced Varan. Varan I didn't had see like it. A, he came onto the pitch, held up the United shirt. Of course, like he was not a part of the squad. He's he was wearing there. a shirt, right? Or he was in no, a he was not wearing. He was in a, in a tux, but he carried the United jersey. Okay, okay. No, he was wearing clothes, right? I was like, he's just walking around naked only shirt. <laughs> I said, that's why you're saying it was so amazing. People like, you forgot your clothes. It's like, oh, it's not Spain anymore. Right? It's like in when England. Women, I mean, well, when women, women fans will go crazy if, if <laughs> he does that or K- Kawani does that. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. As long as Lewandowski does that. Uh, all right. We've got to get on. So the seventh question is like, who is the most overrated player and sorry, overrated coach and who is the most underrated coach in Premier League? By the way, you can't say Mourinho is left, by the way. Don't forget. No, Mourinho is left. <laughs> Yeah, that's now it's 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 a very tough question with Ole, Ole, Ole. Ole is not overrated. I mean, no one. I mean, half the United fans don't. Yes, true, it. but he's still Manchester United coach, so he's overrated to get this job uh, and contracts I, extension. So okay, let me put it this way: Brendan Rodgers is overrated. I mean, is underrated because hmm. he, he deserves a lot more praise. He has to be managing one of the big four. Forget big six. I think. Tottenham and Arsenal, like Leicester at this stage is better than Tottenham and Arsenal. But he is a manager who can manage any of the big four sides. So he is underrated for sure. Overrated. Uh, Arteta, come on, man. Like Arteta is overrated. First of all, I I won't, I, I couldn't understand why, like just because he used to like, you know, be like stand around Pep Guardiola, suddenly he becomes a good coach. Like tomorrow, like I think Pep's personal assistant, they will, they might you know make him a coach of some some team just because he stands next to him. So I think Arteta is is over it. I know he won the FA Cup like in the first few months that he was at the club, uh, and that partly has fueled his you know the, I mean overrating. So yeah, Arteta is overrated. Rogers is underrated. Yeah, that's fair enough because there's a, a spoof podcast, not spoof. There's another person who does impressions, and he has this amazing one on him. That, you know, I was saying like his interview was like, so he's like, so what are you going to do? He's like, um, okay, I can't do the impression, but he says, uh, uh, I know Pep. And they're like, okay, we're good. <laughs> so that's exactly what had happened. So that makes sense to me. All right. Moving on to the next question. Question number eight. Who will be the biggest 
आई लव दिस क्वेश्चन बिगेस्ट बिग मनी फ्लॉप signing this premier league season we already know the big signings you already know sancho 73 million grealish 100 million lukaku 97.5 million ibrahima konate 35 million christian romero 42.5 million kane likely to be 125 to 150 and ben fucking white who had a terrible first game 50 million and pick one two whatever you want i i mean it will be harsh to say ben white is a big signing because like there are people who've been signed on for double that amount no but um, you pay 50 million it's a big signing because it's not worth it right yeah. it's, it's a lot of money for like somebody who's not see, proven just see, because gareth southgate took him yeah. there and you know the he was problem, holding his baby oh yeah. holding the, the baby the, the problem why i say ben white is not because he's a bad player uh, arsenal need a leader at the back ben white is very young he's never played at 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 such high level how like i mean you need someone like at the back for yelling at the team making the sure the team is in maintains a shape like a leader at the back and i don't know ben if ben white is cut out for that i think he's a good player but unfortunately without any leader around him he will crumble unless he takes the mantle of becoming that leader at the back uh, like like you know one of those uh, like i'm talk thinking of vidic and ferdinand and people terry stuff like that but that's too far it's unfair to compare white to those guys but s- someone with that kind of personality who would yell who's not afraid to like take someone by the collar and like just give him a spanking if required uh, so i think ben white uh, to me is going to it's unfortunate but i mean i think he might struggle this season uh, i have my doubts about uh, i would like to say grealish but i'm not say i mean i didn't put him top right at the top because of pep pep just has the knack of like making good players great players i mean i i really like i really thought sterling mares are really average players who just like you know they are great at dribbling the ball but within pep's system like he has definitely improved those two players and i just think grealish is surplus to requirement at man city and the 100 million price tag will will force uh i mean pep, no one forces pep to do anything but there will be a little pressure to like play grealish again and again with without him being up to speed to city's system so i might say i i'll say that grealish might struggle initial few weeks or months in the season and there'll be pressure now, there was a long rant All I want to say right now is, if Sancho bloody flops, I'm going to troll you. I'm going to do really bad things to you. I'm going to put posters of you and Sancho in very, very objectionable state. Definitely no clothes on, and that will just that's something which I'm going to do because we paid so much money for this guy, and you love I him was, to I death. Was, I was I was praying Sancho gets an assist or a goal so that you know I am settled and I say, see, he came and but. Anyways, he he just came in for a few minutes in the end, so we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, we'll come back to that. So now that Mourinho is out of Premier League, who will challenge VAR in the battle of the most annoying thing in Premier League? Klopp is fucking annoying. He can't. I can't sit through his freaking press conferences. He's so grumpy all the time. But anyway, do you, did you is, have a? Th- what has happened? Yeah, I don't know what has happened to him. I used to like his press conference. He was honest, upfront. Last year, just, he just, just became just, a bitter it's man. Depressing. It's just like I'm just saying, like it's depressing. Uh, Did you have somebody in mind? No, I, to be very honest, no. But I think Rafa Benitez. If 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 Everton uh, does not win in the initial few matches and the crowd turns hostile, I would love. He might get annoying. Oh, we'll figure it out. I still think it's going to be Klopp. All right. So it's just weird. I mean, you are the pundit. I'm supposed to give you answers. This is not cool. And Rafael Benitez, but I think he's pretty cool. I like that guy. All right. Who will be the player of the season in Premier League? You can pick up to three, and whatever you can tell me. Please don't tell me Kevin De Bruyne because every ESPN pundit just loves Kevin De Bruyne. They just want to like you know have sex with this guy. So okay, let's keep him aside then. Thank uh, you. Bruno I just Fernandes. don't want to hear his name. Every ESPN Bruno. pundit just picks Kevin De Bruyne every season. Bruno will be there. Bruno will one hundred percent be there. Uh, I said Mo Salah will be back earlier, so I have to put him in there. Uh, and 
third one would be hmm, this is granite zaka <laughs> uh, i mean i i wouldn't even put a cent on granite zaka anywhere near that list uh i think uh harry kane at city harry kane you just love harry kane all right fair enough now um which of the following this is the final question now mm-hmm. in case it can happen if united wins the premier league this season which of the following dares you will do or you can also pick yours but if you pick something that i don't agree with then i will not approve it and then i'll actually assign you something so be very very careful one is you shave your head not shower for a week wear a short dress to a date night with your wife i hope you still have date nights not speak a gujarati word for 2 weeks i don't know how you will do it because you're as gujarati as i've ever seen switch off internet and phone for a week <laughs> boy luckily you're older but it's going to be difficult kiss a random male united fan in the streets of toronto on the lips you don't have to do tongue but at least on the lips record a dance with your wife and post it on our channel our blunt bastard channel for everybody to see so you can also choose a different dare but as i said to you i'm going to make it clear if i don't agree with you then i'll assign you the dare okay. which i want to give you and i think it's okay. reasonable enough for you to do this after united wins because we've been dying and shit man we've been dying okay i mean i i am thinking i mean there is there's not too much pressure because i i i genuinely like it's wishful thinking i don't believe that united will win the league if they do however if they do i'll be ecstatic and from the list of things that you've said hmm if your wife is picking i'm sure i know she would have picked something <laughs> she was like he was not going to do it anyway so might as well pick that one i okay i i i i don't mind like i mean this one's easy i, I not speak a, a good you word for two weeks i think i can do that that's easy but so your family you, what are you going to how are you going to speak with them you going to speak in hindi they'll be like okay. why are you speaking yeah, hindi today to them in hindi yeah that's fine yeah you can but they'll still be I, like what I, is happening here uh, yeah they will they will be a, a weirded out a little bit or maybe i i'll choose not to speak for 2 weeks <laughs> so maybe, maybe maybe i can combine that with hmm. switching off the internet and phone for a week how about that because i really want to do that the switching off thing regardless because it's like even person like me i'm just feeling like i'm just using a lot of phones i mean like and it feels like addictive like you just have to use just i want to throw it away for like a little bit i think my bikram will be traveling away so we, i might just you know switch off for a little bit just uh, because uh, right now it's necessary to like you know do this but we might have some podcast already lined up so we might not do it for a week or so i'll just completely switch off like literally i would not even look at my laptop i'll just go completely barren yeah. i want to do this i've just hmm Yeah by the way I just want to take a screenshot of like after the first weekend's fixture United might be at the top because of goal difference 3 points plus 4 just take a screenshot hopefully we have many more weeks or match days after which United will be at the top I just somehow feel they might not be there come end of May Well, you know what? When in everybody was taking screenshot of the India at the Olympics at number two, when they had just won the uh, <laughs> silver medal on the very first day, they were number two after China. That still makes sense. But we are Manchester United. We can't be that desperate. That's true. That's show true. some respect to Manchester United. Okay, you're just talking like ESPN punt. You're just like you know trying to like make sure they listen to this. They're like, oh, we want this guy. We like him. He yeah, hates Lukaku. He, lo- he loves Kane. And only reason he didn't say Kevin De Bruyne because you know the host was just pestering him not to say it. So he's the perfect candidate. And he says a lot of wrong. Yeah, I'm trying things. to angle my way back in. Hmm. And you don't yeah. like Arteta also. So you're like, oh mm, yes, this is the perfect mm-hmm. candidate. I think the hundred million pound um, contract is back on the table. and this time you might just be lured by it it's like how many times can i just take couple of candies from these people and keep doing this thing over and over again all right so we've started well united has won arteta has lost which is arsenal and let's see if ralph well, how do you pronounce his last name hassan awesome. 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 can get sacked this year before steve fucking bruce whose players call him he's a cow all right on that note take care thanks fake pandit you've done a good job great job here again all right All right.